Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be feeding my hungry pack of Nepenthes hamadas, and I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. Um, these guys I got last fall from Vistuba there, and they came in pretty small, but they've done very, very well. I have a clone one, a clone two, and a assorted clone. I let him choose. I thought um, it still would have come on the tag even though it um, was his choice, but it just says any one of my three clones. So, the clone one is doing really, really well. I have them planted with some live sphagnum top dressing, and it went from having a few little tiny pitchers that melted when I first got it to having one, two, three, four, five good sized pitchers just on this one plant alone. And number two, this one here has three good sized pitchers on it. It has actually a little basil shoot coming out already as well. And I think that's sucking some of the nutrients out of the um, main plant, but it's doing well. The little, the little basil's got some decent sized pitchers on it. Nothing adult yet, but, um, but um, yeah. I'm gonna get a close up there. I just love these guys and their teeth. And then the third clone has three pitchers on it. The clone seems to be a little bit redder, and the teeth on it seem to be closer together than on the other two clones. So as I said, today I'm going to be feeding these guys, and what I'm going to be feeding them are just some thawed frozen bloodworms. I get the frozen bloodworms just from an aquarium store. Come on, focus. There we go. And I have thawed them out, and they're just in this cup here. And I have a little pipette, just like so. And it allows me to be very accurate and feed these guys a few little thawed bloodworms each. So I'm just going to go around and do that. I like to do this to all my plants, all my Nepenthes, about once a month. So I'm just sucking some up here. I don't want to get too many at once in case I accidentally over squirt. And then we're just going to go down. And it's a good method to deliver them in. See, you can I'll do that for you and then you can see how I just deliver them in there and as I say you could put piles and piles in but um, you wouldn't want to make them go too foul in the pitcher so I'll do another one there and let's see what else do we have doesn't take very long either. There we go, they got a couple. And I do this to a lot of my Nepenthes. Um, anything that has a big enough mouth that this pipette can get into, I am sure to do. There we go. I can't remember if we did that one or not. I'm not worried even about getting them all, as long as some plants have the, um, bloodworms in. I don't think they all have to be full of bloodworms. So I'll back off the viewing here a bit. Um, about my grow conditions, these guys do have a nighttime drop in temperature. It gets down to 55 degrees in the greenhouse and this time of year in May it can be anywhere from 75 to 85 degrees in the daytime. The humidity in here at nighttime is close to 100 percent. In the daytime the um, foggers kick on and keeps the humidity around the 75% mark for the most part. I have found that these guys don't need as much light as a lot of Nepenthes. So for some reason the clone 2 seems to be able to handle the most light. For all the light I've given it, it hasn't shown any signs of red on it whatsoever. The unknown clone seems to be able to handle the next amount of light. You can see, or the, the next least amount of light, you can see the reddening on the leaves there. So when I see the reddening on the leaves, I know it has enough light, and I just kind of back it off. You can see this one doesn't have any red because I have backed it off recently. And clone one just seems to be the easiest, most vigorous clone that I have. Um, I try to keep it in the shadiest spot because, like these leaves here, that is red from 
the sun and you can see this one here and then once I realized what was happening that it was getting just way too much light even though the other ones weren't getting or weren't turning as purple I did back it right off and all three of these get the same amount of light still but you can see this one still has all the purple in it compared to clone 2 which sits right beside it and it has none of that whatsoever so I would say that clone 2 is a much higher light um, loving Nepenthes there what else can I tell you the top dressing is just the live sphagnum moss underneath is an airy mix of sphagnum orchid bark and perlite I make sure it's a very fast draining mix I never allow it to dry out but I try not to keep them soaking wet either uh, it probably gets watered three times a week in the summertime two times a week in the wintertime let's see what else there's a fan over there for air movement they're quite close to one of the vents so that when it is hot in here they have cool air kind of breezing past them a little bit although they're not as um, highland as some of my plants I do still try to keep them under 80 85 degrees and yeah so those are my Nepenthes hamata I love these plants I bought three of them because I love them so much I'm super glad I did uh, they're all doing really really well and who knows I may even add more to my collection because they're just an amazing plant but anyways I hope you like this video and if you want to see more videos like this make sure you subscribe to my channel and as always thanks for watching